Now let's talk about a few specific findings of some uh, cardiac conditions. First off, heart failure. You're definitely going to come across patients with acute decompensated heart failure, with whether systolic or diastolic or mixed in nature. And uh, a few cardinal features can really help us. We already talked about the third heart sound, the S3, which again we're going to appreciate with the bell of the stethoscope in the left lateral decubitus position at the apex. But another very important part of the cardiovascular exam when you're trying to assess for heart failure is to assess volume status, and that's best done by looking at central venous pressure as estimated by jugular vein distension, by your jugular vein pressure. And the way that we're going to do that is by tilting his head off to the right, just tilt your left to, the, to your left, sorry, Sean. Um, we can now visualize the, uh, the vessels of his great neck um, in his, underneath his skin. All right, so having talked about jugular vein distension and seen how well that can help to identify acute congestive heart failure, we're also going to want to look for peripheral edema, which can be an important sign as well. So let's take a look down here at the legs. The most common place to find peripheral edema is going to be in your lower extremities, particularly in, if I may rotate the leg here, the pretibial areas in front of the shin, the shin bone, and down here in the pedal areas, uh, so-called pedal edema. Assessing for edema is very simple. You're going to push on top of the skin, hold for two or three seconds, and then quickly release. And you're going to look and see if there's any pitting, that is, if there's an indent left by your thumb, uh, after you uh, pull your thumb away. And typically, if it stays as a depression for a longer span of time, that may suggest more of a proteinaceous kind of edema, like early lymphedema. Whereas if it resolves within five seconds or so, um, that may suggest more of a hydrostatic type of edema associated with heart failure, or even an oncotic uh, pressure type of edema, uh, for example, from hypoalbuminemia or cirrhosis, et cetera. The most common cause, though, of edema in the lower extremities is none of those uh, very advanced um, organ dysfunction problems. It's actually just chronic venous insufficiency, which is a failure of the valves in the veins to return blood effectively to the heart. So all that is edema is not heart failure. And that's why peripheral edema turns out to not be a particularly useful prognostic sign or diagnostic sign when you're trying to make a diagnosis of heart failure. That being said, it's extremely useful when you're tracking a patient over time as you're diuresing them, for example. In the same way that tracking somebody's weight can be helpful when you're trying to see if you've diuresed them or over diuresed them, etc. So not useful to make a diagnosis, but useful to track patients over time. Importantly, when you do push on the skin, you may find that a patient looks like the leg is swollen and edematous, but you push down and immediately when you pull your thumb off, the indent is gone. And that can be suggestive of lymphedema, uh, advanced lymphedema. When somebody has acquired lymphedema or secondary lymphedema that has been progressive for a long span of time, whether it's from a prior um, lymph node dissection, perhaps in the upper extremity, or even folks who have chronic venous insufficiency for a long span of time can develop this uh, lymphedematous uh, process, a secondary lymphedema or verrucous lymphedema, you're going to find that the skin is so fibrosed and thick that when you push, um, you can't push in very far and there's no indentation that's left afterwards. So the interpretation of edema can be very nuanced and it's important to realize that it's useful, but it's not gonna make or break a diagnosis of heart failure. Since we're here in the legs though, it's worth us taking a look at the, uh, at the pulses that you can identify in the legs. We're gonna talk more in a moment about the posterior tibial pulse. It's right here behind the medial malleolus. You can palpate it there. The dorsalis pedis pulse is going to be located here, just a little bit lateral to the, uh, the very prominent uh, first MTP uh, joint there. Secondly, there is a popliteal pulse. Very difficult to find, uh, for me at least, but it's going to be found in the popliteal fossa um, between the um, semimembranosus and tendinosus tendons on the left and are the medial and lateral aspects um, of the back of the knee. And then the femoral artery is going to be uh, up here 